Welcome to episode 48 of the Cohesive Home podcast. Before you hear the episode that I recorded with The Nester, Kate and I wanted to chat a little bit about what's been happening with us lately and also um, give a shout out to some good friends of ours. so happy that we are jumping back on the mic. I feel like it has been forever, Melissa. Yeah, it has been. (laughs) I know, it's really sad. Well, speaking of friends who record together, uh, we wanted to share with you one of our favorite podcasts. It's called The Friendlier Podcast, and it's hosted by Sarah and Abby. And they are two friends that in each episode, they talk about the books they're reading, they usually will share a recipe because they love food and they love family time around the table. Mm -hmm. And then they're also really awesome about sharing topics that are just so relatable, like how to deal with kids and screens and their approaches. Yep. Or kids and eating. That was a one I liked. That's a huge one. Yeah. And they're genuinely friendly. Like they are, they are friends, but you really do feel (laughs) like you are just sitting down having a chat. Like they are so um, enjoyable to listen to and very calming. I, I love it when they get to the book part and they start like flip, there's like pages flipping and you're like, (laughs) yes, the books, because typically it's stuff that I would never read. And so I love just hearing about their thoughts on these kind of obscure books sometimes. Yeah. Well, and what's so great about it is that they're so relatable because, you know, I know I went through a phase when my daughters were much younger and those days at home would be so long and turning on a podcast where you feel like you're hanging out with friends, Mm -hmm. they made such a difference. And so if you're a mom who you need that sense of community, I really think that you're just going to love this podcast so much and relate to it. Absolutely. We will be linking to them in the show notes and also on our website. And again, that is a friendlier podcast. Okay, so enough about people that, you know, aren't us. Let's talk about ourselves now. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) sorry, girls. We like you. Um, But no, seriously, like I always talk about myself to Kate like a lot. I just, I'm going to admit that Kate has helped me through a lot of things over the past few years. Um, I think that was one of the reasons I gravitated towards her as a friend. Um, She always gave great advice and sound advice. And so the thing and the project that she's been working on for the last few months has just a continually, not not surprised me, but just, I mean, overjoyed me. Every time I listen to your new podcast, Kate, it is so good and has such sound advice. And so please share what you're doing with that and kind of give everyone um, an update on how it's going. Yeah. Oh, Melissa, you just like... I feel like I'm practically in tears here because (laughs) just hearing what you said, it's just, that's so sweet. I value you. I value your friendship. Thank Um, you. So the podcast is called the Streamlined Motherhood Podcast, and um, it's not your typical parenting advice as in this is how to feed your kid or this is how to sleep train or anything like that. It's more the idea of motherhood and how do we thrive as mothers and as individuals. And so I try to talk on topics that, you know, I feel that I need to hear about that add value in my own journey as a mother. And I hope it does in your life as well. And so I try to put out an episode every Tuesday and I am also working with moms one-on-one to offer motherhood support sessions. And this has been amazing so far to do. That's awesome. Yeah, I feel like um, I can I can vouch for these one-on-one sessions, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no offense. I mean, I do get them one-on-one. 
quite frequent basis. <laughs> but uh, um, and she, you're you have to. Sorry, Kate, <laughs> you have to give me advice. No, <laughs> and that well, and like all of you listening know. I mean, that is what you do for your friends, right? You support each other yeah. uh, through the good and the bad, and so um, I am so happy to do that. But yeah, I've just opened up my schedule for offering these one-on-one sessions. And so if that's something that you're interested in, I would love you to head to my website, uh, thestreamlinedlife.com forward slash coaching. And if you sign up there, I do offer a free 30-minute phone call with me. And we can talk about whatever is troubling you that you would like um, guidance on. um, And also if there's any goal setting or dreams that you want to work toward. Those are all things that I am really excited to uh, work with mamas on. Yeah, that's. I think that that's something to really highlight there is that it's not just if you are maybe um, having a challenge in your life. Yes, that you will help them with that and like work through that with steps, like actionable steps. But you also are wanting to help women um, goal set and dream and and be mompreneurs or whatever they want to be. Um, you are able to also give them actionable steps for those um, areas of their life as well. Yes, absolutely. Because I know how much it's helped me to work with someone. And so I want to continue to, you know, pay that forward. So definitely check that out. And then Melissa, yeah, <laughs> you have a YouTube channel, and like I am so excited about this, you guys. I have been on Melissa for <laughs> years now yeah, to remember, start vlogging. You know that coaching and, thing? Yeah, she's been telling me for like. <laughs> and I will right. I will do that for you if you work with me. I will get on you to, you to make your dreams happen. Yeah, <laughs> it only took me oh, three years. It's cool. <laughs> I know. I know, but. But, okay, so let's talk it, about, yeah. tell us what you are doing for your channel. Okay. It's, it's so awesome. Yeah, so I think that that was one of the main reasons that tripped me up over the years was that I have so many things that I love to do or to talk about, and um, I could never really narrow it down to some sort of niche. And I still don't even know if I could say that I have. Um, I would maybe say lifestyle topics within the world of wellness. And so, you know, I'm currently taking aromatherapy classes. And um, as soon as I get into some deeper um, courses with that, I'm going to start incorporating that in. Um, But as of right now, I'm sort of just getting my feet wet. You know, I have a broadcasting degree, so I know how to edit. I know how to do all those things that I need to do those skills, right? But um, actually creating content and creating a cohesive uh, video that doesn't bore people half to death (laughs) is really difficult. So getting into that groove and getting into the just the the habits that I have to do and the things I have to think about has been, um, it's been, it's been good. It's, I like it. It's, I forgot how much I love that process. And so I only have like two, two recent videos are, are posted. One was from way back, like a year and a half ago, but then, um, um, my other one is actually coming out today. Like the day that this podcast hits is the day that um, I put new videos out every Thursday. So, Woo-hoo! yeah, you're going to find my lovely face. Um, and I'll be talking about things that are are good for your body and good for your life and soul and all of the above. So yes. hopefully... I could do some coaching oh, of my own for some people. I don't know. We'll see. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know what? I I love that you are doing this. One, because these topics are so crucial to us mamas and yeah. trying to create homes with intention and that they are healthy and our kids are happy, right? Like that's what we always talk about. And so yeah. I love that you're focusing on wellness, but also on what makes us feel good as individuals. And yeah. so you guys, like, I've watched her first couple of episodes. They are so great. Don't let her fool you in saying that she's still trying to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> you guys need to head to her channel and give her some love. Make sure you subscribe because I can only imagine, like, the content is great right now. 
and it is just going to continue to get better mm-hmm. and better. So Thank you. what is your YouTube channel so they can find you? Um, so actually, if you, you can find all of it through just melissarisenhoover.com. So I have the longest last name ever. Um, I will link it. <laughs> <laughs> I will link my .com in, in the show notes. But then um, if you just look up my name as well on um on YouTube, you could find it. You have to have a hundred subscribers in order to get a YouTube like backslash, like youtube.com backslash Melissa Risenhuber. Oh. And so please like and follow if you are a YouTube person, please uh go even if you're not, go onto YouTube go onto YouTube and just like like my channel, please. (laughs) Follow my channel. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Okay, so how many subscribers do you have right now? If you don't mind sharing. I have 31. So I have 31 subscribers is is what I have. Okay. So Melissa has 31 subscribers. And I think that we all need to blitz her this (laughs) weekend with the episode coming out. And go subscribe on YouTube. Let's get her over 100 so she can get her fancy forward slash backslash with yeah. something slash yeah. I don't know what it is it's just you can get a, a customized YouTube name oh you know, very so fancy. cool so yes we're gonna make that happen well I know that we really enjoy talking about ourselves um but I had a really great little chat with uh, Macklin Smith. And she, if you don't know her, she's also known as the nester. I actually stumbled upon her years ago. Um, when I was blogging, I think it was way before Pinterest days, way before Instagram. And I found her like through a blog hop. I don't know if any of you know what those are, but it's, it's where you would link or a link thing, link party. I don't know. They were known by a bunch of different names where you'd link your blog post and you would go to the person before you and you would go and see them or you would scroll through and find a blog you thought was cute. And so I think I found her through one of those. And um, it's really cool to just be able to talk to somebody that you you kind of knew them in their humble beginnings, you know, and so now she has a couple books out. Her latest one is Cozy Minimalist Home. And I was able to to talk to her about that book and just just get some really good um, uh, tips for living uh, in a with a minimalist mindset, but yet also still enjoying your space, you know, being cozy and, and enjoying that. So I hope everyone listening enjoys my interview with the Nestor. Well, Michael Lynn, I am so happy to have you on today. Um, I am sure that most of our listeners are probably familiar with you and your blog since if you, I don't know, Google or use Pinterest, you've probably stumbled upon your blog in one way or another. Um, but why don't you give our listeners just a quick rundown of a little, a little bit of your backstory and how you found your way from being, you know, a design aesthetic type blog into cozy minimalism. I feel like it's such a um, opposites in a way sometimes when we think about that. And so I just love to know um, how that came about. Sure, I would be happy to. Well, about 11 years ago, I started online just because I wanted to leave comments on other blogs without looking like a killer. So I started my own blog and called it Nesting Place and talked about home stuff from time to time because that's all I know anything about. And it ended up growing its own community, which I loved. I love the internet for that. I love the community online. And so I talked about home and it it became my job. So this is what I do now. I write books, I teach classes. um, I'm on Instagram every day and I love it. And I encourage women in their home. And I do that by sharing what I'm learning in my own home. So the good, the bad, the ugly, the mistakes, the imperfections, and the pretty parts and just what I'm learning. And so, you know, you're right. Like how does someone get from talking about um, hot gluing her drapes to minimalist? And that's because, you know, when I first started 10 years ago, my kids were little, we had moved to a, we we moved around a lot. um, And I, at one point we moved to a bigger house and we needed, lamps, rugs, 
beds, <laughs> desks, chairs, like we needed stuff to furnish our house. And I had to get really creative with getting that. And so I started thrifting, DIYing, coming up with creative solutions. It was really fun. Um, gave me a lot to talk about online, helped grow the audience. But over time, my house filled up and I didn't realize it. And I didn't know when to stop. And so uh, we finally ended up buying a house, a fixer upper out in the country, but it was a lot smaller than the rental we had lived in. And when we moved out here, I realized I've got way too much stuff and this has got to stop. And so that's kind of where my story picks up is um, even in the, the book I write is like, okay, here we are in this house. It's a fixer upper. And I just brought in a bunch of chaos to this place and this is not going to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually know that quite well. I've definitely been there before. That's hard. Um, it, so here at Cohesive Home, we talk a lot about our values and just how we implement those in our home. Just kind of how you're saying, you know, you like to encourage women within their home. Um, how it does your cozy minimalist aesthetic reinforce your family's values? Well, I, you know, with our family, I think with any family, we long to be really intentional about everything we do. And I know for me and my husband, we've always been um, really picky with our schedules, what we say yes to, what we say no to, um, purposeful in making decisions. You know, we talk about it. We take the time to decide. We might pray about it, whatever, depending on what the things are. We're really careful with what we add and what we subtract to our life. But I was not doing that in my house. And it was such a disconnect for me. And so Cozy Minimalist gave me, um, you know, that parameter of being able to decide what goes in and what stays out. Because for so long, I was just like, everything come in more, more, more. If one pillow is beautiful, 10,000 pillows is going to be the most glorious thing you've ever seen. And so I was doing the opposite in my home of what I was doing in my life. I wasn't being super intentional. I wasn't editing. I wasn't allowing for white space. I was just accepting more and more, partly because we had a bigger house and we had room for it. And I wasn't saying, you know what? that's enough. Like that's enough of that. That's enough throw pillows. That's enough tchotchkes just because I have, you know, $5 in my pocket and I can get a piece of art for $5 at a thrift store. doesn't mean that I need it. Right. Yes. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. We, Kate and I, I, I feel like we talk about that a lot. We, when we first started out, we were both just like, oh, minimalism, get rid of all the things, you know, and over the years, we've both kind of come into this, um, maybe our own form of cozy minimalism, where we, we understand the value of things, we understand that sometimes you have to have um, aesthetically pleasing couch or you know, stuff that makes you happy, um, as long as it's not to the point where, like you said, you're stuffing this house full of things that don't, you know, necessarily belong there. Um, so within your book, so that's actually one of the main reasons we're having you on today is because you have a new book coming out called The Cozy Minimalist Home. And in the book, you say that you realized early on that um, in, within this journey of yours that less stuff definitely gave way to more life, which I absolutely love that. Um, I just think it's just so well said. But so how has minimalism trickled into these other areas of your life beyond just home design? I know that you already shared a little bit on that. But do you, you know what I mean? Like, how, how has that expanded your because I mean, obviously, you said you and your husband had already edited things within your life. But do you feel like it expanded your um your family's togetherness or anything like that? Yeah, I think it just, it, it all reinforces each other. Like sometimes we are more focused on our home. Sometimes, you know, we're like, oh, we got to attack the schedule or, you know, think about what our goals are for next year or get our finances in order. Whatever it is, I now, whether I admit it or not, I do think I see it through a grid of minimal and enough, but also what you talked about, the cozy part, the plenty, because it's not one or the other. They both work together. So I think cozy and minimal are two tools that we can use and apply to our life. In the book, I apply it to home, but really it applies to every aspect of our life. And so that minimal is just means enough to meet a goal. But when we think about the cozy or the abundance or plenty, you know, think about um, if you're creating a guest room, 
you can have it minimal. Like you can have it enough to meet a goal, which if your goal is just to have a guest room where people can sleep, then you just need a mattress. But if you also want them to be comfortable and it to feel welcoming, well, that changes your goal a little bit. And so you might want some privacy drapes. You might want a cushy rug for them to step out on. You want to make sure your pillows are really soft. You want to make sure their blanket is warm. So that cozy part can inform our choices of, well, maybe I don't need 10,000 pillows or 10 pillows, but I might want more than one just to make that welcoming and extra cozy. And so it's that balance between the two, that ever shifting, like, is this? Is this too minimal? Is this too cozy? I mean, when you think about um, having hors d'oeuvres at a party, well, we don't want minimal. That seems like we didn't expect our guests. That seems unwelcoming. And so there's something so graceful and giving about having plenty, about having a tray of hors d'oeuvres with stuff overflowing. And I think there is a space in all areas of our life for abundance and where we can celebrate that. But there is also a place for minimal and having simplicity and just enough and not worrying about extra, not going overboard and not having excess. So that balance between those two works in our home. It works in our schedule. It works on our plate. It works in so many areas of our life um, that, yeah, like I think we're always kind of reshifting our focus on how we view that. Awesome. Awesome. And so (laughs) really talking about family here, you have, is it three teenage boys? Well, our oldest is going to be 21 soon. So now. Oh my gosh. So yeah. And then a junior and a senior in high school. Oh my goodness. Okay. So you, you, you know, (laughs) you are full on boy mom. (laughs) Um, Yeah. (laughs) And it just always, especially when I see like white things within a house and then I hear that you're a boy mom I'm like how (laughs) white things can be bleached it is the the secret like you just hot water and bleach oh my gosh it's better than just about anything that is a really good point I never really thought of it that way (laughs) that's funny um yeah I need to need to you know start utilizing that in my life I think um so for our listeners um, to kind of shift gears a little bit, for you being a boy mom, can you give any just really good advice to to moms out there raising boys or even girls? Just do you have any advice as a parent um, for um, anyone listening right now? I think one of the best things that my parents did for us is um, they gave us a place a place to be messy. And they didn't always insist that our toys be put away neatly and organized every night. We had a really clean house. My mom is super tidy. She's like the cleanest lady in America. But we had an area. uh, Sometimes, it depends on the house that we lived in. uh, Sometimes we had, one time we had our own playroom. Other times it was just like on the other side of the bed or wherever it was. But we would have some play areas that we could set up and not have to clean up the next night. And what that did was it allowed us to like elaborate in our imagination and creativity. And we could play for days with a Barbie house or my little pony castle or whatever it was because we had it set up and then we could just go for it. And I look back and think that was such a gift. Like, I don't know that my mom intentionally did that, but um, with my kids, I intentionally did that because I would remember having friends over and then as they were leaving, which I appreciate, you know, they'd be like, well, let's clean it all up. And I'm like, whoa, 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 <laughs> just touch this. Like, it just took three hours to set this up. We are going to milk this for all it's worth. And like, take advantage of this Thomas the Tank Engine track because this is marvelous. And so just having like, there are spaces in the house that, yes, need to be cleaned up every night. We're going to do that. And that's like taking care of our place. But there are also other times that we want to honor our creativity. And so allowing your kids, and especially depending on their personality, some personalities need to put stuff away every night. And some thrive off of having a place to be messy and creative. And, um, you know, so that's like my biggest takeaway is just allowing that for your kids, providing some place for long-term play. Love it. That is great advice. Now, I have to ask, though, because we have a lot of listeners that, including Kate, who is my co-host, they live in a travel trailer. And it is to find extra space is sometimes hard. Would you maybe have any, I don't know, maybe a tip of uh, how to maximize space in order to let your children have that little, little corner or nook or something like that? Well, I don't know that I am. I mean, that's a whole different ball game that you're choosing, yeah. which is fine. But I do think that not every space has to be inside. 
there might be some outdoor spaces somehow that you can create. And I know some of my most imaginative imaginative times as a child were outdoors. So Mm -hmm. I definitely think just it doesn't have to be doesn't have to have a roof over it like that. It might be something creative you're doing within nature. Yes. Wonderful answer. I love it. So Kate and I were lucky enough to get a copy of your book before it comes out next month. And within your book, you give some really practical tips and um, just valuable information on how to break down uh, the steps in creating a cozy minimalist home. So as a little teaser to what you have to offer in your book, could you give our listeners just one quick and easy tip that you um that you would recommend in starting this process of joining those two sometimes polar opposites, you know, cozy and minimalism. How would you, you know, could you give a little tip as to how to start that? Ooh, I, this is not going to be like probably the thing you want to hear, but I think the thing, the best place to start when we want to make a change is to be inspired And so I always want to start at Pinterest and Pinterest does not have to be a place where we feel guilty about ourselves or jealous or mad. Pinterest is a place of inspiration and it's a gift to us. And so I would say start a Pinterest board with whatever room you want to work on first in mind. And I want you to pin with passion and abandon. And so you're not going to only pin things that like, well, I can get that rug down the street. It's in my price range. I like that color. No. You're going to pin anything that just for whatever reason you find beautiful or you can't stop looking at. You don't have to be able to explain it. You're just going to start a pin board with that room in mind and you're going to pin beautiful things, whether it's like, you know, it takes you a week or a couple days. You want to have like 50 or 100 pins before you ever make a change in your room. You just want to get inspired. And what that does is it gives us hope. It gives us encouragement. It can give us direction. And then as you walk through the other cozy minimalist tips that we have, whether you're using my book or just doing this on your own, you can always look back at those and refer to those if you're like, wait a second, you know, my art looks weird, or my mantle looks weird, or did I get the right size rug? You can look back at those photos and be reassured when you see all the different ways that people do things. And so I always think uh, starting with Pinterest, starting with an inspiration board of some sort is the best place to start. Awesome. I love Pinterest. It is. It, it can really be a love-hate relationship though, sometimes. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm like, oh, but I, actually, to be honest, I think I've stopped pinning, like I still pin food, but I've stopped pinning things that I'm like, oh, I should make that. <laughs> I'm like, I've just no. stopped. <laughs> there's no need for that until, you know, it's there when we need it. And so True. unless you're going to make something, there's no need to pin it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's a really good point. <laughs> well, okay. So can you give our listeners just, you know, rundown of where they can find you. Maybe um, I know I was on your Instagram today and you were sharing about a new course that you are doing or your fall course that just came out. Um, Just let them know all of the things if you don't mind. (laughs) Absolutely. Well, my favorite place to hang out is Instagram. So that's where I put daily encouragement uh, photos of my home. So it's imperfect, but it's still pretty. So they're never going to make you feel bad, but I hope they'll motivate and inspire um, and leave you with something to do in your home. (laughs) Um, And so that is on Instagram at the nester. And I also have a website called nesting place where I hang out from time to time. It's more like the encyclopedia of stuff. And so that's the nester.com. Um, I've got two books about home. The first book I wrote is called The Nesting Place. It doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. And that is if you need to first first find contentment in your home, um, you're going to want to read that book. And then the second book, Cozy Minimalist Home, is going to give you step-by-step design advice. So like what to do in what order so you can get your home looking the way you've always wanted so you can use it the way you've always dreamed. Both my books are like at Barnes & Noble, all the bookstores, Amazon. Amazon is super easy. Um, so it's there waiting for you when you're ready. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Do you like to be called the nester or I <laughs> Michael? Lynn? Anything. I mean, that was my own choosing because yeah, I got online with this name and I'm like, no one's going to be able to say this. I need to get a pretend <laughs> name. So <laughs> 11 years later, it still sticks. It's still sticking. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on to Cohesive Home. I, I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate that.